Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can determine hedges G for a one sample t-test using Microsoft Excel. Now hedges G is an uh, adjustment on Cohen's D for which I have a separate video so if you're interested more in how to calculate that and um, have a look at that video. Uh, I have the steps uh, here um, my data is in column A it simply takes the average of uh, column A, the difference between the average and the hypothesized mean, then divide, uh, calculate the standard deviation, and last but not least, you divide this difference by the standard deviation to get Cohen's D. Now, to determine hedges G, um, what we do is we calculate the sample size, which is simply going to be the count of column A in my case and the degrees of freedom which is simply the sample size minus uh, 1. Then we can uh, calculate uh, that's an in-between value um, M which is the degrees of freedom divided by 2. Now be careful in some formulas M is the degrees of freedom so depending on where which source you're using it might look slightly different. Now the Hedges G, the exact version, is defined by this scary looking formula. So it's Cohen's D, uh, we already have. And then this is gamma function, but luckily uh, Microsoft Excel has a gamma function. So what we could do is simply say, well, it's going to be my Cohen's D multiplied by the gamma function of my M, which is in cell F23, and then divide that by gamma again uh, now m minus 0 0.5 and multiply that with the square root of m which was that f23 now unfortunately though um, if we do it like this we get an error uh, up here and it's not because we made a mistake in the formula it's because if gamma if um, if the f is uh, f23 the m if that's bigger than uh, 171 uh, gamma is just going to be too much to calculate for Excel. So for example, if I use uh, gamma 171, it's just okay. And if I use 172, it starts to give that error. Now luckily, uh, Hedges actually took this into consideration and he came up with an approximation. And he said, well, what you could do instead, and it's probably also easier and still good enough, you take Cohen's D and multiply it with and then 1 minus and then oh, minus 3 divided by open a set of parentheses 4 times the degrees of freedom minus 1 and then we close everything and that's a good enough approximation others have also come up with approximation for example in Durlock although I think that one was for a pair of samples but okay um, he says well you take Cohen's D and you multiply it with and then n minus 3 close the parentheses divided by n the sample size minus 2.25 and you multiply all that with the square root of two sets of parentheses n minus 2 divided by n and that should give us a similar result as the other one uh, you might see with more decimals that there is that there are small differences not many but okay so uh, Xu actually also gave a formula as you can see I already entered it that's uh, this one they actually came up with I think five different ones this one being the longest one um, I actually put that whole formula already in here so uh, if you're really interested you can just copy paste it oh by the way I'll leave a link to this Excel file on my website uh, a link to my website is in the description below um, in the file I also made a user-defined function that can actually do all the calculations for me. Uh, that looks like this, so if you enable the macros in the Excel file then uh, these should also work for you if you download my file. Alright, and that's how you can calculate hedges G uh, using Microsoft Excel for one sample t-test. I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.